Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with another flagship from Dell to take a look at. They've got three of them. This is their largest, the XPS 17, and it has that very thin bezel display and a very large one at that. And we're going to be taking a look at this laptop and what it's all about here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this laptop is on loan from Dell. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one starts at around $1,400 and quickly escalates up from there. The one they sent us is their decked out model, which will run you about $2,800 to $3,000, depending on exactly what you put inside of it. So be prepared to pay a price uh, for this premium piece of hardware. Now, all versions of the XPS 17 have a 17-inch display. This one has the 3840 by 2400 display. It runs at 500 nits. It is a touch panel as well, and it looks spectacular. It better for the price point. And it is so bright, we had to turn the brightness down a bit so we didn't blow out our cameras. And when you're using this laptop at the typical distance you use a laptop at, the screen really feel, fills up your whole field of vision. It's pretty remarkable, and I was very, very pleased with that. Now, there's also a lower resolution version of this. So same size screen, but less resolution. And that one will have a 1900 by 1200 display. But I found when you've got laptops with screens this big, and given the distance that you typically sit from them, those 1900 by 1200 displays don't look nearly as good as these. Sometimes you can get away with one of those 1080p displays on a lower uh, size panel, but here I think you probably want to go for the 4K if you're jumping into this premium line. It really looks nice on this one. Now, in addition to display choices, you also have a choice as to what goes inside your laptop. They've got a bunch of different processor configurations. They've got one on the low end with an i5 chip, this one has an 8-core i7, a 1087-5H from Intel, and there's also an i9 version available. This one has a discrete GPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. At the time I'm shooting this video, this is the top-level GPU configuration you can put in. It's got 6 gigabytes of video memory. There's also a version with the 1650 Ti, which won't deliver as much graphical horsepower, but it will save you a little bit of money. That one's got four gigs of video memory and you can find it on some of the mid-tier configurations. I would certainly recommend getting one of the two GPUs on this. They have a version that doesn't have a GPU, but if your intention is to do video editing or photo editing or any kind of media production, you're gonna want that GPU on board to get the best performance. And of course, if you plan to play a game every once in a while, you're definitely gonna want the GPU. And I would say if you've got the 4K display and intend to game, the 2060 is probably where you wanna end up. Uh, RAM on this model is 32 gigabytes, but you do have a choice as to how much goes in when you buy it. It is upgradable, so you could start with a lower amount and upgrade down the road. It's got two DDR4 slots inside. Uh, this one has a one terabyte NVMe solid state drive. It is super zippy, as you can see here, when you're loading up applications. Uh, that can be upgraded as well if you don't want a large one to start. Now, the weight on this is quite hefty, as you would imagine. Uh, the starting point is 4.65 pounds or 2.11 kilograms. But when you get the nice big 4K display on here, it adds a little bit more weight. So this one comes in at 5.5 pounds uh, or about 2.5 kilograms, certainly big and heavy. But it's very well balanced. And one of the things I always look for when I'm reviewing laptops is how well does the display lift up uh, with just a single hand here. And as you can see, it keeps the keyboard deck here very nicely on the desk as I move the display around. It's not a two-in-one or anything like that, so it goes to about here before it stops, but you do have a good amount of range here in which to move. And due to its heavy weight, when you touch the screen here, it doesn't shake all that much. In fact, my desk is shaking more than the laptop is shaking at the moment. So it's a very well-constructed device, all metal. Uh, the keyboard deck here has their carbon fiber that you've probably seen from prior iterations of the XPS line, and the keyboard itself feels really nice. Uh, the keys feel about the same size as they do on the other models, but you have more uh, room for the speakers here on the side. The trackpad is enormous, like some of the other recent XPS models. 
but like those as I'm typing, sometimes I'm accidentally clicking the pad with my, thing, my hand here as I'm typing, and that's because this is using a mechanical click pad, uh, unlike the Macs, which have a, a virtual one that can detect inadvertent movements and not register a click. This one, you're probably going to click it every once in a while while you're typing, especially if you put a lot of weight down on the keyboard. Now, like other Dell XPS laptops, the keyboard is backlit, and they've also integrated a fingerprint reader into the power button here. Now, if you're doing a lot of zooming, there is a webcam here at the top. It is only though 720p, so the quality isn't spectacular as you can see here, but it's certainly good enough to get your Zoom calls done. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems getting this to work with any video conferencing software that's out there. You got a lot of horsepower here and it can handle video quite easily for those tasks. It also supports Wi-Fi 6, so if you are on a more modern Wi-Fi network, you'll be able to take advantage of the full speed that's available to you there. There's a lot of ports on this one, and we'll go back to my overhead view and have a look at them. Uh, what you've got here is a Kensington lock for locking this thing down on a desk, uh, but then you've got a bunch of Thunderbolt 3 ports. You've got two on the left-hand side here, and these are four-lane ports. It'll support video out, power in, and of course, these will work with USB data devices in addition to the faster Thunderbolt devices. So it's always good to see at least one Thunderbolt port, but this one's got four of them because you got another two on this side. And again, all of these ports are full service, and that's a lot like how the Mac works. You've got a full-size SD card slot here. Unfortunately, the card sticks out a little bit, so you're not going to leave it in all the time. Uh, and then over here, you've got a headphone microphone jack. And overall, the fit and finish of this is super nice. It looks a lot like the XPS 15. Uh, just a very nice metal package here that feels super solid, uh, again, with a very comfortable keyboard to type on. And overall, I'm just very pleased with all of the industrial design that goes into these XPS machines, and this one is certainly one of the nicer ones I've seen. Now, battery life on this one isn't bad for a large laptop. You're looking at about eight to nine hours if you're doing the basics like web browsing, email, and word processing. That, of course, is assuming that you keep the display brightness down to a lower level. If you're running it at the full 500 nits, that battery is certainly going to drain faster. The 1900 by 1200 display version will do a little better than this one uh, because it does consume less power. So if you are looking for longer battery life, the lower res display may be the way to go. It charges with this 130 watt charger, which plugs into the Thunderbolt ports. You can plug it into any one of the four. And I did also plug in some lower powered chargers, namely my MacBook Pro charger. Prior versions of the XPS that I've owned didn't like lower powered chargers getting plugged in. Uh, here it'll take it, but you'll get a warning to say, hey, we're charging, uh, but just so you know, you're not getting the full potential here. And if you really start putting the computer under load with one of those uh, lesser powered adapters, you'll start eating into the battery even when you're plugged in. So my recommendation would be to use these 130 watt adapters. Uh, my friends at Notebook Check pointed out some earlier versions of this model had issues where they wouldn't draw more than 100 watts out of the charger, but it appears as though Dell has rectified that situation. Uh, so this one should make full use of the power adapter that it comes with. So let's take a look now at its performance, and we'll begin with web browsing. We'll load up the Google Chrome browser here and visit a website on Wi-Fi. Uh, this is connected up with my wireless AC network here. As you can see, everything is super fast and snappy. You're not going to have any problems here doing the basics on this machine. Uh, we also looked at YouTube a little bit earlier, running some 1080p 60 video. We did get a couple of drop frames when it started, but once it kicked on, it was running just fine. Uh, so things like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and all the other stuff you might be watching on your laptop uh, should look fine on here. And if you install the Windows versions of Netflix and some of your other favorite video apps, you can truly take advantage of the 4K display that it has on board. Uh, this is an HDR display and it supports Dolby Vision on Netflix and the speakers here uh, support Dolby Atmos Audio. And I have to say the speakers sound spectacular on this. They're upward firing here from the keyboard deck. Uh, really good spatiality to them, especially when you're watching Atmos content. Very crisp and clear and a good range of sound as well. It's not booming bass, but it sounds a lot better than what I've heard out of other laptops. And that's one of the advantages you have when you've got more real estate to install larger high quality speakers is better quality sound. So all good there. 
Now, we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, which measures how well it does on the web. Uh, there we got a score of 242.2 on version 1.0 of that test and 139 on version uh, 2.0. Altogether, it performs pretty much right where we expected it to, and that's good to see out of a high-priced premium laptop. Let's take a look now at some games. So we're going to kick things off with Fortnite, and what we did on a bunch of these games was run them at 4K at their highest settings just to see what the caps were on this particular device. And here we were getting about 20 to 25 frames per second. But if you turn the resolution down to 1080p at ultra settings, you can get above 60 frames per second, typically around 65 to 70, which isn't too bad there. So you won't get the 4K resolution, but you'll get a nice high quality 1080p image out of it. Uh, we also ran GTA 5. Uh, here we are 4K at the highest settings. And there we were getting about 35 to 40 frames per second. And then, of course, if you turn those settings and resolutions down, you can certainly do better than that. So you can have a good GTA 5 experience. Uh, we ran Rocket League at 4K at the highest settings. And there we were getting about uh, 70 to 100 frames per second at 4K. So you could definitely have a great experience with Rocket League, which is what we've seen on a bunch of other devices as well. So that's good there. Uh, the Witcher 3 at 4K, which is often a demanding game, uh, there we were getting about 30 to 35 frames per second. And by the way, when I say 4K, I mean the native resolution of the display here, which is 3840 by 2400. And on the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 5,491. That lines up very closely, pretty much within the margin of error, with a mid-range Lenovo gaming laptop we looked at last year, their Y540 that has the same GPU inside. So you can see how you can get the same performance out of something that costs less, uh, but you don't get all the high quality industrial design of a flagship laptop like this one. And really the choice is yours. If you want performance and you want that nice build quality, you're gonna pay for it, but you can get that performance out of something that costs less if you don't mind having something that doesn't look as pretty as this walking around with you. And by the way, if you're curious as to what the uh, 1650 Ti will look like, take a look at the XPS 15 that we reviewed a few weeks ago. Uh, that one will give you an idea as to the GPU performance there. And that machine was paired up with the same processor that we have in this 17 inch model. And it did pretty well on its thermal performance. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 99.10%. You can also see what the CPU and GPU temperatures were at the conclusion of that test. And that indicates that the laptop shouldn't have too much of a performance drop off when it's placed under sustained load over a long period of time. The fan noise isn't bad on it either. Because it's a larger machine, it can have larger fans and those fans don't make as much noise. You do wanna keep this area on the bottom here clear for good airflow. Uh, but overall, the fan noise is pretty quiet on this one. You'll definitely hear it when you do place the machine under load, but again, a lot quieter than what you might find out of a smaller unit. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux compatibility. We always like to boot up Ubuntu real quick on these laptops and make sure that all the hardware can get detected. Most of the hardware got detected just fine here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, video, touch display, keyboard, but what's not working is the audio at the moment. And I would imagine that's a pretty easy fix with a driver, but out of the gate here, it did not automatically detect the audio, but otherwise everything seems to be working just fine on Ubuntu here. And overall, I think this is a very solid offering from Dell. You're gonna pay a premium price for it, but it's a very nice piece of hardware. I really like the fact that it's got four Thunderbolt 3 ports on board. The display looks fantastic. It is extremely well built. The audio is great. There's just not much to complain about here beyond its high price tag, but you are getting a very nice machine for the money. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.